Let us now apply our knowledge in order to solve these practice problems. Problem number one is asking us to calculate the size of branch circuit. This is the type of the conductor we are using. It's a copper conductor for a 20 kVA continuous load and the terminals are rated as 75 degrees C. Branch circuit is supplied by this power source which is a three phase four wire 208 to 120 volts. It's a Y connected system and the ambient temperature is also provided to us as 30 degrees C. So first of all, let us calculate the continuous loading. So the amperage, the continuous amperage can be calculated by using this equation where we have S is equal to square root of three times line to line voltage times line to line current. You rearrange this equation and you basically get the current is equal to S divided by square root three times V line to line and we get the current as 55.5 amps. Now you know that when we are dealing with a Y system, the line current is equal to the phase current. So 55.5 uh, amps is the phase current and it is also the line current. Since we are dealing with a branch circuit, we have to refer to article 210 and as per NEC section 210.19 A1, 125% of the rated current is required for the continuous loads. So we are told that we have a 20 kVA continuous load. We have calculated what this um, continuous current is and we are going to apply a factor of 1.25 on it and we get 69.3 amps. Now in order to determine the minimum conductor size, we need to refer to table 310.15 B16 and 75 degree C copper column. Uh, we are given the ambient temperature of 30 degrees C and we are going to size these cables assuming we have uh, three conductors um, in contact with each other rather than using the single insulated cable. Now it can be observed that number four AWG uh, which is rated 85 amps will meet the opacity requirement. So now over here when I'm solving this problem I want you to actually open this section of the code. I want you to actually open this table and work through the problem yourself as well. Okay so you should be following these steps because you really need to um, immerse yourself in the code in order to get that level of proficiency and become comfortable and familiar with it. Okay so now validate it that when you go to this table when you're looking at the column okay for THWN 75 degrees C copper um, basically number 4 AWG uh, which is 85 amps will meet this requirement. Uh, why is it? Because number 6 AWG which is a smaller size than number 4. Uh, AWG actually the the bigger the number the smaller the size okay. So number 6 AWG is actually a smaller cable. It is in insufficient for our given case because its allowable opacity is only 65 amps okay. We need 69.3 so that's why we go to the next size up and we get 85 amps. Problem number two deals with a feeder conductor. We are being asked to calculate the size of THWN copper conductor which is required for 200 amp continuous load. Now in this case we don't need to calculate the opacity because it is directly given to us. In the previous problem we had to calculate what that current loading was and then we had to account for the 1.25. We still have to account for 1.25 because it's a continuous load. Um, the power supply is still the same and the ambient temperature is still the same but we are dealing with a feeder conductor in this case. As I discussed earlier, for both feeder and bronze circuits, it's 125% of the rated current when you have continuous load and 100% when you have non-continuous load. So we are going to take this number 200 amps, which is provided to us, and we are simply going to do 1.25 on it, and we end up with 250 amps. Now again, we are going to refer to the table uh, for uh, 75 degrees C uh, copper, our table is uh, 31015B16. It can be observed that 250K mil, which is rated 255 amps, will meet this opacity requirement. Again, 4 odd uh, is insufficient because its allowable opacity is 230 amps, which is less than 250 amps. Now, we haven't had to apply the temperature derating factor in this problem or the grouping factor because those details are um, not provided in the problem statement. So we assume, we can safely assume that it's a non-issue. Okay, you are not told that okay the temperature is increasing and you are not told that okay this cable is going to be in contact with multiple other cables. So you can assume that uh, those factors 
do not need to be applied. But in the next problem, we'll see how we have to account for those derating factors. Let us now go through a practice problem from the study guide. In this problem, we are being asked to calculate the maximum allowable impacity of a three conductor, 350 kcm THHW copper conductor with 75 degrees C insulation rating. Ambient temperature is 30 degrees C, but the conductors uh, will also be routed in a conduit with three other conductors through 45 degree C temperature environment. Assume that equipment terminations are also 75 degree C. So in this problem, we have been given a lot of details to work with. Uh, in fact, we've actually been provided uh, a cable size what we need to find is the maximum allowable impacity for this cable and uh, we are given its insulation rating as 75 degrees C which is the same as the equipment termination rating which is good and the ambient temperature is also provided to us as 30 degrees C and we are told that this conductor will be routed in conduit with three other conductors so think about the bundling or the grouping factor and um, this cable also passes through a 45 degree C temperature environment. So now you have to start thinking about the temperature correction factor. So first things first, what we are going to do is we are going to jump directly to this NEC table and look at the opacity that is provided for the 350 kcm THHW 75 degree C copper conductor. And we find that it is actually 310 amps. Now I have provided you an option which is 310 amps and you could potentially select this but we have to account for the other details that are provided in the problem statement and see how that those details actually impact this 310 amps. Now this is only valid if there are no more than three conductors but we are told that in addition to this three conductor cable we also have three additional conductors so we have to account for the grouping factor. Moreover the temperature is ambient temperature is 30 degrees C but um, this is also going through a 45 degree C temperature environment so we have to account for that as well. So based on the given details the ambient temperature let's start with the 30 degree C first and let's do a grouping factor so we have a total of six conductors. So in terms of the grouping factor it's pretty simple and straightforward 310.15 B3A table it provides as a correction factor for six cables in contact so you have to derate the opacity um, so the you can maximum use up to 80 percent of the rated opacity so that's one derating and for the temperature correction we are going through a 75 degree C environment so for that we have to um, do 0.82 on the allowable opacity so these are the two correction factors that we are going to use therefore the maximum allowable opacity is 310 which we started with times the temperature correction which is 0.82 times the grouping correction which is 0.80 and when you multiply all this you find that your allowable opacity for this cable which we started with 310 amps is actually just 203 amps based on the scenario that is provided to us. Another thing that I'd like to mention over here is sort of hidden in the equipment termination. Okay let's think of a scenario where your equipment termination was 90 degrees C but your cable um, insulation rating was actually 90 degrees C. Okay, so 75 degrees C for the equipment termination and 90 degrees C for the insulation rating. So is there any advantage? We are limited by 75 degrees C. Well, there is because the code allows you to start applying these derating factors. Okay, these derating factors on the 90 degree C column. Okay, we looked at the opacity uh, of 75 degree C column for this particular copper conductor, but if the insulation rating was 90 degree C, we would start applying uh, the derating, fa derating factors on 90 degree C. Okay, so this opacity would be higher and we would end up with a higher allowable opacity. But the limit to that is uh, this higher opacity whatever you end up with can still not be greater than the 75 degree C rated allowable opacity which happens to be 310 amps. So this 310 amps is the absolute maximum that you can have with the equipment terminations that are 75 degree C okay but you get to start with a higher allowable opacity and maybe the number that you end up with will be somewhere in between 203 amps and 310 amps but it cannot exceed 310 amps because you're limited by the equipment equipment termination i actually have a problem on this on this in the study guide as well but the key takeaway is that 
the insulation rating of the conductors is important because a higher insulation rating will allow you to start with a higher opacity then you multiply with after which you can multiply with the correction factors and you can end up with a higher allowable opacity but that opacity again very quickly cannot exceed the 75 degree C or the lower opacity uh, which is determined by the termination rating of the equipment.